his first thing to me was like, do you like to do any hobbies? Do you like, uh, you know, skydiving or, or flying helicopters? Or I said, no, I like to keep my feet on the ground. But uh, but that's what makes Tom Tom. Hi, it's John Hamm. I'm here with The Hollywood Reporter sharing some of my close collabs. Kristen Wiig. I love Kristen. I love working with Kristen. We've known each other for a long, long time and met the first time I was at Saturday Night Live. She told me she was working on a script. She didn't even really tell me what it was about, but she was like, oh, what, did you ever consider being in it? I was like, yeah, I'd love to be in it. That'd be great. Kristen, whatever it is, I'll happy, I can't wait to do it. When we shot Bridesmaids, which is when we shot all of the beginning of the movie, the sex stuff and all the funny stuff, and we had a very hard time keeping it together, but that was part of the fun of the whole shoot was that it was so silly and we were so comfortable with one another obviously so it was just pure pure fun oh, this is so awkward i really want you to leave but i don't know how to say it without sounding like a dick ah. i think all of that joy in the making it not just from my perspective obviously but from Kristen and maya and melissa and everybody involved in it really came through the screen Tina Fey. Now, Tina's another person that I got to know through Saturday Night Live. First week I was hosting, the phone rings in my dressing room in 30 Rock. Hello, uh, we have this part for you. Do you want to do a part on the show? Just, oh my God, yeah, yes, I do. Great. What is it? Well, we haven't written it yet, so oh, okay. Again, me saying yes to something that I have no idea of what they're even doing. But unbeknownst to me, Tina had called Lauren after the read-through and said, is this guy funny? Is he any good? Because she had only seen him on Mad Men. So I got the blessing and I got to to be on 30 Rock. And then over the course of our careers together, I've worked on several things, including Kimmy Schmidt and Mean Girls. And to be a part of that kind of cultural moment feels very good. Jen Aniston is another person that I've known for, for quite some time. I, I met Jen a long, long time ago, although she probably wouldn't remember it. I met her at the premiere of a movie called The Object of My Affection, which my friend Paul Rudd was starring in. It was one of the first Hollywood premieres I got to go to. That was back in the 90s, so she was still like very friends-oriented. And then when the opportunity to work together finally came up, it seemed like a no-brainer. Hi. How do you do? Pleasure to meet you. There's a mutual respect and admiration and trust and all of that wonderful stuff. So to be able to come into such a fully formed, well-oiled machine of a show that The Morning Show was at that point, populated with such incredible actors. It was a pretty nice honor. Jeremy and I got to know one another on the town. Neither one of us had sort of burst through the kind of crust of the working actor kind of situation. And we both had a blast on the town. We both had really good parts in it. Jeremy's career went, you know, so it was nice to keep that friendship up and we ended up getting a chance to work together again on TAG. Oh, God. I don't understand how he came back from that unbelievable injury so quickly, but he's a lovely guy and a very good friend and a tremendous actor. And, you know, he's kind of gotten a second chance to live again. My gosh, it was devastating when we heard about this tremendous accident, but he has come through it unbelievably. So, big ups. Elizabeth and I obviously worked on Mad Men for many years and tremendous relationship on that show. Obviously Don and Peggy were like were invested in all of that. So now this is my fault? Well, it's not my fault. Over the course of 10 seasons of, or 10 years, seven and eight seasons of a show, you develop a shorthand with everybody. I mean, it was just Elizabeth at all of this Vinny in January and John Slattery and Bobby Morse and Christina. We all were very close over the course of that run. We were made something uh, that we were very proud of. Tom Cruise is the last movie star. He is a one-of-a-kind force of charisma and nature and talent and everything. And to be around him is to sort of bathe in that reflected light. I was tremendously honored to get the offer to be a part of Top Gun Maverick and to be invited into that world that meant so much to me when I was a teenager and a young man and even before I even considered being an actor was pretty inspiring in many, many ways. Your reputation precedes you. Thank you, sir. Wasn't a compliment. Tom is very loose on set. He's very prepared and he's very serious as well, but he's also, you can tell that he very much enjoys what he does for a living. He 
He loves being on set. He loves engaging with people. He loves having conversations. He loves to find out about people and have, you know, what are you, what are you into? His uh, first thing to me is like, do you like to do any hobbies? Do you like skydiving or, or flying helicopters? I said, no, I like hiking and tennis. So I like to keep my feet on the ground, but that's what makes Tom Tom. You know, he is a full tilt representation of what, what it is to be pure charisma. Jamie Foxx exudes talent uh, in everything he does. He's a tremendous energy on set, working on Baby Driver with Jamie. Obviously, we had a lot of dangerous sort of choreography and things, and so you really wanted to feel comfortable around everybody that you were on set with, and Jamie was the consummate professional. And not only so good and so fun and funny, but just loose, you know, he would bring his iPod or whatever and just kind of keep music going and everybody would be in a good mood. A friend of mine described Jamie as the mayor of every room he walks into, and that's sort of tracks i feel like I'm, I'm i'm always learning i watch people part of part of doing what we do is understanding that a lot of people do things differently and there's a lot of ways to get to the to the finish line people can find their own way to their truth and uh hopefully interesting permutations and combinations of what can what can be that's the fun part of it is sort of figuring out what it's going to be like and then enjoying it while you get a chance to do it. It won't be too long before the computers take all our jobs away, so we might as well enjoy it while we can. This has been John Hamm. Nice talking with you, Hollywood Reporter. See you next time.